From the beginning of time, our oceans have been an endless bounty of essential resources for our human survival. They provide generous sources of food, sodium chloride, and other essential salts, and are the exclusive home to five phyla of the Earth's creatures. Rock strata beneath the ocean floor provides rich sources of oil and natural gas. The ocean is the driving force behind the water cycle, weather and climate systems, and even rainfall. We are totally dependent on our oceans for our continued, our continued existence and our health, yet we abuse them daily with the continuation of reckless polluting and irresponsible fishing methods. Over 80% of all ocean pollution starts on land. Whether it's deliberate dumping or runoff from rivers and drains, debris from oil, fertilizer, sewage, garbage, and toxic chemicals find their way in oceans every day. Fertilizer runoff from farms and lawns poses a tremendous threat to our coastal areas. The additional nutrients increase algal blooms that deplete the waters, dissolve oxygen, and suffocate other marine life. This has led to massive dead zones in multiple areas around the world, including the Gulf of Mexico and the Baltic Sea. Since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has increased nearly 100 parts per million. Our oceans absorb roughly one-third of the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, so there's been a substantial increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in our oceans as well. Industrial activities and the combustion of fossil fuels release more than 6 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year. Increasing levels of CO2 in the water results in the acidification of our oceans. Marine organisms that build their shells and skeletons out of calcium carbonate find it almost impossible to grow in such acidic waters. But the problem goes even further than that. Phytoplankton, which construct the base of the marine food web, also protect themselves from predators with a calcium carbonate shell. If they are compromised by such acidic waters, this possible decrease in phytoplankton could cause a dangerous domino effect to the rest of the marine food web. Another negative side effect to the increase in acidification is the reduction in coral reefs. Coral reefs are home to more than 25% of all identified species of fish that support our oceans. The impact that the demise of coral reefs could have on marine life is astounding, but the possible loss of multiple marine species is daunting. It was once assumed that the ocean was so vast that all pollutants would be dispersed and diluted to safe levels, but now we know that was naive. Chemicals don't just disappear, and some toxic materials become even more concentrated as they enter the food chain. The smallest ocean organisms at the bottom of the food chain, such as plankton, absorb chemicals as they feed. Because they do not break down easily, the chemicals accumulate in these organisms, becoming much more concentrated in their bodies than in the surrounding water or soil. As they are in turn eaten by larger animals, the concentration rises again. Of course, not all pollution is chemical. Some pollution is just plain garbage, like plastic bags, and glass bottles, and packaging materials that, if not disposed of properly, will end up in the ocean. Plastic garbage, which decomposes very slowly, is sometimes mistaken for food by marine animals and has been found blocking air passages and in stomachs of many marine species. As if all of this isn't disturbing enough, there's a growing opinion among marine ecologists that the single greatest threat to marine ecosystems today is overfishing. Our hunger for fish currently exceeds their ability to reproduce with possible catastrophic impacts to our ocean ecosystems. Scientists caution that overfishing could result in serious changes to our oceans, changes that cannot be reversed. If you cannot relate to this situation, consider a time when all types of fish would be a delicacy reserved only to the most exclusive restaurants available only to the most wealthy. Quite simply, fish are no match for the sophisticated fishing boats and fishing methods of, quite simply, fish are no match for the sophisticated fishing boats and fishing methods 
that dominate nature's ability to replenish the population. These enormous state-of-the-art floating factories, floating factory fish, fishing boats are powered by enormous engines that drag hungry fishing gear through the ocean. They use sonar to locate entire schools of fish with astounding accuracy and are equipped with process, packing, and freezers. The fish cannot compete with such aggressive methods. If the fishing industry cannot self-manage responsibly, the government must intervene. Politicians must not continue to ignore the long-term effects of such irresponsible fishing methods. The results will have horrific impacts on our oceans, and we will pay dearly. We must acknowledge our oceans as a critical resource worth protecting. If industry is not willing to make changes in order to limit careless waste, fuel, and chemical disposal, the government must step in and make regulations and fines. Cities must acknowledge their negative impact on our oceans and take the steps to clean up their act or face reductions in federal funding. The bottom line is that we all must consider where we would be without healthy oceans and do what is necessary to make certain that day never comes. All right, do you guys have any questions? I do. All right, go ahead. Sarah, which species of fish have been most dramatically affected by overfishing? Um, well, a lot of fish have, but mainly large fish, such as cod, swordfish, tuna, marlin, and halibut. And the numbers are extreme. It's over 90% of their populations have been decreased. This elimination of top predator species could also have a dramatic shift in our ecosystems. Um, are there any more questions? Yeah, I have one. You mentioned that giant fishing gears get dragged to the ocean. Does that ever do any damage or pick up, pick up any unwanted species? Yes, actually this is called bottom dwelling. Um, this happens all the time. Um, majority of the time when they pick up on unwanted species, they throw them back. But sometimes it's too late and they just die. And also, a major problem with bottom dwelling is when the fishing gear is dragged across the bottom of the seafloor, it just rips up coral reefs. So that's another major issue with um, the fishing gear that we have. Are there any other questions? I have a question. We were all outraged by the BP oil spill in 2010. Um, did this have a major effect on all the oceans? In the big scheme of things, no. Um, the reality is that oil industry related runoff accounts for about less than 12% of the oil seeping into our oceans. According to the U.S. National Research Council, the greatest single source of oil entering our oceans comes from rivers and drains as waste runoff from our cities and our industries. Well, any more questions? All right, thank you.